this is songs in the night. But then say it to God, my maker, who giveth songs in the night. Did you blow it today? <laughs> you know, did you blow it? Did you sin? Did you go out of your way to get mad at someone? Take it out on them? Are you disappointed with the way you've acted today? Are you having regrets and kind of feel bad about what happened today? That's what Songs in the Night is about. When we have the quiet time of the evening, when the sun has gone down, and we're left alone with the thoughts that we have of the day that we've lived, and none saith, Where is God my Maker who giveth songs in the night? What will you do, and what can you do with what you've already done today? Did you lie today? Probably. Did you cheat in some way? In some profession? In some business ethic? In some negotiation? Did you not use the truth and hide the fact that you knew better? Have you failed your own expectations in some way? You know. And you know that God knows. But none saith, Where is God my Maker, who giveth songs in the night? Today, if you're like most human beings, you've blown it in some way. If you're a man, you know that in some way, some means, somehow, you really have messed up in some way. You got angry unreasonably. You had murder in your heart. You've committed sin. You've done adultery in your mind and your eyes. The lust of the flesh has grabbed you and you gave into it. What will you do when you lay down this night and rest your body that your mind may wander with all the things that you've done today? God said, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's an interesting thing. In the morning we wake up, and to wake up, we wash up. We clean ourselves up. We take showers and we scrub ourselves to put on our best face, to make ourselves look good before the world and its ways, so that we can be presentable to the business that we have at hand to do. We make ourselves into the image we want to be. But when you end your day, have you considered the way that you present yourself to God Almighty, who hovers over you at night as you sleep, as you rest and dream, as all the input that you've taken in your eyes, that you've taken in your ears, that you've done with your own hands, now has been programmed into your mind to be stored into your memory. What will you do with the things you have done that was sin in God's sight? Have you been forgiven today? Have you talked to God? Have you not let the sun go down upon your wrath? Or are you still angry yet? And now you've got a root of bitterness springing up inside the garden of your soul. Songs of the Night is about that. Taking the time to clean up. To take the time to wash up. To admit the truth and fess up to where we've blown it today. You haven't surprised God by your failures, nor will you surprise Him by your success. You see, God already knows who you are, and He has already written about what you are. And there is none righteous, no, not one. But today is the day that God made for a particular reason. And that was so that you could rejoice and be glad of it. Because He already knows what it is. God, my Maker, giveth songs in the night that we can rejoice 
in the forgiveness and the mercy that he's extended to us by his grace, not by the things that we've done. You see, it's by grace that you're being saved, not grace that you are saved. The grace of God was already given and extended to us so that we could have a relationship with God through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. In other words, God gave His Son so we could have communication and relationship with God our Father. But the maker of the universe knows that we will sin after the fact. That once we have been forgiven, we will still sin and we will still commit failures in the sight of God Almighty. And what will you do with that when you have sinned in front of God, your Maker, who giveth songs in the night? How can you sing the Lord's song in a strange and foreign land, as the psalmist says? How can you rejoice in the day the Lord has made when you bear in your own flesh the penalty of committing sin today, your guilty conscience. What can you do about the wretched person that you are when you started your day assuming that you were such a spiritual man, a man of God, a man without sin? You can wash up. You can clean up. You can fess up to who you are. God Almighty, our Father, treats us as naked in His sight. There is nothing hidden that shall not be revealed. There is nothing that He has not known, that He has not seen, that He has not been made aware of, and that all the angels in heaven have not watched as you perform your day, either to the glory of God Almighty or to the ignominy or ignominious actions that you did today. But the only one that really thinks of it as a failure is you. Because, you see, your failure can be turned into a success. Your sinfulness can be turned into righteousness. Your anger can be turned away from wrath and be brought into the realization that God loves you. Now, how can God love someone who started off so right and ended up so wrong. How can God accept someone like me and someone like you who screwed up miserably today? Jesus. Jesus stands in heaven at this moment in the night offering up prayers and supplications for you. He's offering up, literally, his own blood to God Almighty, saying, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. If we confess our sins, and the big if is what you will do, because if you don't wash up from your actions that you've gone on with today, if you don't clean up the things that you've done out of your own attitudes and actions that you planned and did of your own accord, if you don't fess up to God that you need help to change your ways, then tomorrow you won't start so tender towards God. You might even turn away and hide your face in shame, realizing that you are a wretched man of sin. But the Spirit of God moves in the night. The Spirit of God causes light to spring up in the midst of darkness. The Spirit of God causes us to be convicted of sin, but to help us to confess our sin. So that once again, though sorrow may endure for but an evening, joy cometh in the morning. Reflect on what you've done today and admit it to yourself, then confess it to God. Look at what you did this morning and at noon and at night. Admit where you failed God Almighty in your attitude, 
your actions, the way you handle things, the way you portray Jesus to a sinful world. Admit it, and God can take care of it. Deny it, and God will cause you in some way to pay the consequences for it. You have a remembrance in heaven that is written and recorded by angels who are watching. Today was recorded in your mind, in your heart, and in heaven in a book. To blot out those sins and transgressions that are like a cloud of witnesses against you, God says, ask me, and I will. What's in your mind, I'm sorry, is it easy to be taken away as God can take away that cloud of witnesses that's against you for what you've done today? But what's in your mind can be reprogrammed. You can be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the washing of the Word, by literally taking some type of time to put in your mind before you sleep the Word of God. For me, none saith, where is God my Maker, who giveth songs in the night? Because for me, songs in the night is the beginning of my day. For me, night is the beginning of my new day. And I have joy at the night time to share with you the realization that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I can rejoice and be glad in it because though the sorrow you feel may endure for but an evening, there are some of us who stand by night in the house of the Lord and pray for you as we ought, care about you as we want, love you as we should and intercede on your behalf, saying, God, help. God, forgive. God, have mercy. Did you know He giveth His beloved sleep? Do you want to know the difference between being forgiven and unforgiven? The man who can't sleep, according to Proverbs, stays up at night thinking of plots, devising ways, and manipulating his plans and organizing his time in order to lay traps and to plan out destructions. But the opposite of that man, according to the Word of God, is the man who can sleep for he giveth his beloved sleep. Tonight, when you rest, before you fall asleep, remember that one thought as you consider your day that you failed in, but also the day that God forgave you in. Consider the one thought that God gives his beloved sleep. If you can go to sleep tonight, if you can close your eyes and dream, if you can let go of your wakefulness, then let me give you a promise of God. Let me give you a word of God. Let me give you the scriptures as God has said them to you and I. You are his beloved because he gives his beloved sleep. 